I have an article here. Many days I would pass on this article, but I can't seem to put this one down. Not because it's prurient, not because it's the big news of the day, but it troubles me. And it's in the Daily Mail, and it troubles me because one of the problems we have is the deterioration of the family, which leads to criminality, which leads to poverty, just misery generally, and undermines a culture and a society. And I see this attack on the family, just it, it, it is continuing, it is aggressive. So I read this, and I read it again, and I posted it on my social sites, and I decided during the break that I am going to bring it up. And it's in the Daily Mail, and they write, here comes the bride, and another one, and another one. Meet the world's first married lesbian threesome, and they're expecting a baby due in July. Their names, Doll, Kitten, and Bryn, all from Massachusetts, married last August. I don't know where they married. I guess in Massachusetts. Maybe Britain. I don't know. The world's only married lesbian threesome are expecting their first child. Doll, Kitten, and Bryn from Massachusetts were joined together in a marriage-style ceremony last August and are expecting a daughter in July. Kitten, 27, is pregnant after undergoing IVF treatment using an anonymous sperm donor, and the trio eventually plan to have three children, one for each of them. Is that how that works? Like a puppy dog? Doll, 30, Kitten, this is, these are their names, Kitten, 27, and Bryn, 34, from Massachusetts. The plan at the moment is that Kitten will bear all the children, possibly using her wives' eggs and donated sperm, but they're open to other options, such as adoption. Bryn, 34, says... The hope is to have three kids all together. We always joke that the children should never outnumber the parents. Doll, Kitten, and Bryn married in a ceremony. I already read that. The so-called, they have a name for this, Thropel, T-H-R-O-U-P-L-E. Not a couple, but a Thropel. Worked with a specialist family lawyer who drew up the paperwork and drafted the ceremony so all three of them were obligated and bound to each other. While Bryn and Kitten are legally married, Dahl is hand-fasted to both, so the threesome are as equally married to each other as legally possible. What is hand fast I, I don't even know what that... What the hell is... I don't even know what this means anymore. Dahl, 30, says, As far as we know, there aren't any other three women who are married like us. It was back in 2009 that Bryn first met Dahl through an online dating site. Senior software designer and engineer Bryn had been married twice before to women. And both experiences have made her acknowledge that monogamous relationships weren't for her. What's that title again, Mr. Producer? The L what? Lesbian, uh, lesbian, bisexual, what is it? Bisexual, gay, what? whatever. They're going to have to add this one. Meanwhile, fashion designer Dahl had known that she was polygamous since high school. She explains, I'd always dated girls who, although they had boyfriends or girlfriends, were also allowed to date me. I never thought that much about it. I'd never really come out as poly to my friends and family, poly, polygamous. To me, it was just how I was. Now, Brendan Dahl dated for eight months before moving in together. Two years later, they purchased a house together. Having both enjoyed polygamous relationships before, Dahl and Brynn looked for a third woman to join them. And after a few failed liaisons, Dahl and Brynn created an OK Cupid couple's profile. Eventually, they received a message from Kitten. Before meeting Dahl and Bryn, Kitten had been in two long-term relationships with men. Her first relationship lasted 10 years, and she'd been engaged to her second boyfriend. Fashion manager Kitten says, My second boyfriend and I have been together for several years, but a few months before our wedding, he called the whole thing off without explanation. Well, I think I have an explanation, but I won't voice it here. At first I was distraught, but now I'm grateful for what he did. And so is he, I bet. And it goes on and on. After saying their vows and exchanging rings, the girl had had a drinks reception. The trio did their dance to Kitten's favorite love song, I'll Stand By You with the Pretenders. It should be I'll Stand By You's with the Pretenders, don't you think, Mr. Producer? Or, depending on what part of the country you're from, I'll Stand By Yiz. I'll Stand By You's, I'll Stand By Yiz. Mark, that's not English. Duh. It's only three months after their beautiful wedding day that Kitten fell pregnant. After undergoing IVF treatment using the sperm donor, 
Let's see. I think I've hit the gist of it. Uh, let's see. Dahl, who was herself teased at school, explains traditional schools tough enough for a normal kid, and I don't want my child to be picked on because they're raised differently. I can't stomach the idea of putting them in the crossfire like that. Bryn adds, through homeschooling. I think we can also educate our kids to have the same strength that Dahl, Kitten, and I have. Three of us have been brave enough to stand tall and go against what society calls normal. I hope our child will feel free to do the same thing if they wish. What society calls normal. What do you think about this? Do you think this is on the horizon? I do. Three women, three lesbians, who are all essentially married, and they're going to have uh, children by in vitro fertilization, and they want three. And I'm asking, is this the future? I don't mean everybody, obviously. But in this country, will this be recognized as a civil right one day? Will the same lawyers who go in front of the same activists, federal judges, go in front of the same activists, Supreme Court, at least activist members on the court, including Anthony Kennedy, one day make the case as Jonathan Turley does? All you conservatives who quote Turley about, oh, we have a, you know, a, uh, a president who doesn't follow the law, well, Turley is behind this movement, one of them. And they go in front of the Supreme Court and they say, hey, look, we can't argue that there's anything like traditional marriage anymore. You guys shot that down. It's just a matter of if people are in love. And who are we to interfere with that? Why should the government be involved at all? You've heard it. State or any other government. If three people, four people, really, really love each other, they're not bothering anybody. And after all, these children, if they adopt, wouldn't have a home anyway. What's the problem? You know, separation of church and state, uh, uh, you're in love. Uh, I mean, who are we to say that such people shouldn't get married? I mean, don't you remember the case in, the, in Virginia? I mean, when a, uh, when a white man and a black woman wanted to get married? Don't you remember that? And the state said no, and the Supreme Court said sorry. The answer is yes, because, you know, they use that case to, de to defend every single, virtually every other case in that regard when it comes to same-sex marriage and so forth. I've heard it on my own show, callers. Okay, fine. Let us stipulate, just for argument purposes, that all these arguments are embraced by our federal court system because it looks like they are being embraced. Well, what about the 14th Amendment, the Equal Protection Clause? Why should just two people be happy when three people can be happy? Look at all that happiness there, Mr. Producer. And why not have such a loving family? Whether it's three women, two men and a woman... Two women and a man, a transgendering man, a bisexual woman and another guy. What's the problem? What? Stay out of the bedroom. Who's to say? And they're going to homeschool their kids. So they're going to take responsibility for their children. They're going to provide for their children. Maybe even adopt children. Isn't that a good thing for society? I mean, aren't these the arguments we're going to hear? Of course they are. One day. Look how quickly... Obama turned on a dime in two years' time. He claimed to be adamantly opposed to same-sex marriage, turned on a dime because he wanted campaign cash, endorsed it, and now all of a sudden it's a constitutional right. All of a sudden, every damn federal court that looks at it. I would ask my dear friend, he is a good friend, Ted Olson, one of the great litigators in the country who's represented groups and so forth. What say you, Ted, to polygamy? whether it's all the same sex, different sex, mixed sex, whatever. How do you distinguish it? Well, that's, it's traditional to have a man and a woman. I mean, wait a minute. It's traditional to have two. Well, why? All this traditional stuff is out the window, right? So my point is, while I could read that and mock it and laugh at it and do that as some would, I'm not. I read it to you because I think one day it'll be said that polygamy is a constitutional right. And Jonathan Turley and other activist lawyers getting in front of activist judges will push that agenda. And given the logic flow and the precedent that exists right now, he's right. Tradition doesn't matter. Customs don't matter. None of it matters. That appears to be where we're headed. 888-900-3393. 